So, Jeremy, in Hello. retail. Hello. Um, oh, I have one as well. You have a, have a, just one or two. Um, our first book that we've actually done a reprint. So, oh. thank you very much. That's okay. Um, I can see that possibly the reason is that you're hoarding them. <laughs> <laughs> These are all the ones I have left. So, all right, I thought, so yeah. Thought I might as well get them all out and give them some air. Yes. So tell tell me about how this came about. How how did you start writing this and when did you realise it was a collection? Um well I started just um like a Christmas job at a well-known pharmacy mm -hmm. um, and it, it was just gonna be for Christmas and then afterwards they asked me to stay and um, I just found ideas for poems just kept popping into my head all the time um, something somebody would say or a strange situation or or just the actual language of the shop as well it's quite interesting um mm. how, how things are named and all that kind of stuff so um yeah i just started writing um little poems and as i said in the book some of them were just uh scribbled notes on the backs of till receipts um and because we weren't allowed to have anything on our person in the store i used to shove them in my sock and hope I wasn't going to be searched. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever? <laughs> um, I was only ever searched once um, and I didn't have a, a, a hidden poem on me. I don't know what they do. That'd be quite good disciplinary, wouldn't it? Yes. Caught, Caught with a poem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caught in possession of a poem or the very start of a poem. Um, so uh, Quite quickly, I sent a few out and had them published, um, you know, like on websites and magazines. Um, and, and then I thought, oh, well, this could be like the start of like a, a little book or something, a little bit pro book project. And um, because I'd always just numbered, well, I'd call them all in retail one, in retail two, mm. blah, blah. A, a bit like how well how they are in the the book but without the in retail bit in front mm. um so i always kind of saw them as a set uh and so the the very first thing i did with them was make a little artist books because i make artist books as hazard press um just a, a little a5 no a6 book like that, that and each cover had a um shopping list that I'd found on the shop floor incorporated <laughs> in it um, <laughs> so I can't they you know I took some of them to um, book fairs and they people kind of seemed to like them and appreciate them um, and, and kind of understand them because it's always it's, well it's quite interesting you know you write the poem so you don't necessarily know if other people are going to what you're talking about or if they make sense or stuff like that yeah it's a rare person who hasn't had at least a saturday job in a shop isn't it yeah yeah exactly. um yeah because yeah. i so related to some of the things because you know, I, I worked in john lewis right saturdays for a while yeah. and then i worked in a bookshop and yeah you know, that thing about when you start recognizing the customers coming in and and, and you have your own name for them yes <laughs> yeah all the, all those kind of things i had sanskrit scholar and <laughs> oh okay well it's interesting as well because um that was really my first job in a shop mm. i'd gotten to my advanced age without working in a shop um i'd always worked full time but then because i was trying to sort of be an artist and yoga teacher and blah, 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 i had a portfolio career so mm. um i was able to fit few shifts in um, so then one of the longest poems that I did of that which was originally in real in real in retail 23 I sent to you yeah and that was included in your anthology or well, the Ar Arachne Press anthology 
the other side of sleep. Mm. Um, yes, long narrative poems. Yes, had to be it had to be over forty lines. Yes, <laughs> um, and I think that's the longest poem I've ever done. So that probably mm. could be the only one that would have ever got in. Would have fitted, yeah. Yeah. So um, again, that gave me a real boost seeing it in print, and then we had the launch in London, and I read the poem out there. Mm. And I, I really liked the kind of response from the crowd. You got a really, really good response from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. People were talking, it, it, because it's so repetitive, people are going, hmm, and then they go, ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember Kate Foley saying to me, I didn't think I was going to learn something coming to this launch, but I've just learned something about poetry from Jeremy. Oh, oh I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I should think. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of all, all part of it. And then um, you asked for suggestions for mm. um, possible books and stuff. So, so I remember I just sent you everything, and I you sent did. <laughs> yeah, so broke one of my rules. Is that don't just send me everything with an elastic band around it. Think about it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that. That's why I really appreciate you and Arachne Press because like you could take somebody on that didn't have a clue about that and just mm. help sort it all out because i i hadn't i had no experience of that and i sent mm. i sent everything i sent all the telltale stories as well didn't i yeah which were yeah. little kind of almost prose poems about things mm. uh that so happened they'd the, started off as tweets hadn't they yes they'd start as some of them yeah yeah or, um, uh, and i could tell <laughs> I remember saying these read like tweets, and he's like, yeah. "That's what they are." Yeah. Um, and yeah, but there were there's a couple of those that ended up in the yes. book, yeah. well disguised. Because, as I said, yeah. Well, you you That's the same way as the others, and this can work. Yeah. Well, you those were the ones you suggested, and so worked, yeah, and, um, and they became others. It's three or four of them, I think, in the yeah. Up, I yeah. So again, yeah. That, that was great just to get your kind of input into. Doing that going, it's, it's like kind of saying the idea's there but the form's not working yet or mm, uh, yeah. So, yeah and um very quickly we came up with the idea that we wanted it to look like they were written on the back of till receipts yes yeah. and i was mulling on the idea of them of i i did actually go and get a till receipt and scrunch it up and then put it in my scanner and see what it looked like and it looked terrible i thought okay we won't do that yeah. uh, <laughs> So we're not going to have them as, as thrown away till we see it. Um, and it enabled us to get some of the poems that didn't fit in yeah. as part of the till we see idea. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for people who have not seen the book, not seen the book, it's yeah. one of our best sellers. Yeah. Um, so it goes like so. Yeah. You have in retail at the yeah. top, back to front and pale like it's yeah. showing through on every page. And then at the bottom, Thank you for a custom on one side. Yeah. And some tiny patient to buy yeah. or a tiny little poem yeah. on the other yeah. side. So yeah. that yeah, so this this one was um a poem, wasn't it? Yeah. Friday Girls Buying Full Snails. Yes. Um yeah. yeah. And and that was great fun. And and then we had to think about we couldn't have them be called in retail number, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, and then we wanted to do them in a different order, so we had to renumber them anyway. So it was getting. God, I got slightly mind blown on all the numbering. I have to say, it's sort of just tell me what you want, Jeremy, and we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's kind of um, like what when what it works completely now, doesn't it? Yeah. But when we're in the midst of it, it was. It was I couldn't, really difficult to figure yeah, out. I couldn't think um, straight. It was yeah, but once once we decided uh, that it was going to be zero zero forward slash and whatever mm. the number was, so that it was a product code. Yes. Was the idea, yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and and we'd worked out what font to use, so that it's this wonderfully retro sort of nineteen seventies till receipty type yeah. thing, which yeah. nobody uses anymore, but everybody recognises yeah. immediately as yeah. till receipt language. Um, and it really started taking off at that point um, because most of the poems are so tiny 
I, I, really, I think it is actually only 23 as it was, which isn't anymore, it's three now. It goes over more than a page. Yeah. Um, and, and then we had to think about what the order was actually going to be. Yeah. And then we started sort of grouping them into, well, these are about being managed and these are about the customers and these are about other stuff. Um, just got slightly vaguer. Uh, and what it was, what each section was called changed quite a bit, didn't it? Yes. It's got kept on being shifted. So, no, I don't think that fits there. I think it fits here. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we were both using the same version of InDesign, so we could just send things back and forth. Yeah, I mean, that, that was really great. Yeah, because um, otherwise it would have been really difficult. Yeah. Because, yeah, try to explain it, not on the actual page. That, so difficult. Yeah. Whereas, it, sort of, like this, was, yeah. You know, and, yeah. And yeah. then if I agreed I didn't have to do it, I got it. It was great. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that worked very nicely as far as I was concerned. I have to have to warn you, Jeremy, I don't think many publishers will work like this. No, <laughs> no, I, I totally appreciate that. It's I, only now after the fact that I realise that and <laughs> I realise how, how, how generous you were. Yeah, the, with, there with were one, there was once or twice that I was biting my tongue, but yeah. I just... Yeah, whatever. There's, like like when, when um when we were going to the reprint, you said, "Can I change one word?" I said, "You're too late. It's at the printer." <laughs> <laughs> so whatever that word is, you're stuck with it. Yeah. Well, it's quite cool because I can just add it to the to the um, redo. So uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. Um, and I th and I think um, twenty three that came three actually gained a line between the original publication and, and this one, didn't it? The, um, yes, was it, what was it, it had, um, uh, Mother Thinks... Contactless is Satan's Kiss. Something like that, yeah. Yes. Um, which definitely wasn't the original one and I just, no. yeah, yeah, Mother Says Contactless is Satan's Kiss. Well, because well, <laughs> quite interesting, in the, in the time between writing it and then the book coming out, yeah, the and use of cards had changed. Yeah, <laughs> so people were using their cards in a different way. So yeah. I wanted to, to at least kind of acknowledge that mm. and um, uh, just have, have a little bit of that in. So, mm. I mean, that, that's the great thing of like, the, the process, really, isn't it? That you can... mm. How do you feel about them all being tied down in print now? Because... Um was morphing right until up until the very last minute wasn't it yes but i think um i'm, I'm totally happy with it mm. it's exactly how i would have wanted to be it to be if i had known what i had wanted at the first place if you yeah know, you know what i mean yeah um, I, had you known what it was yes. it would have been this <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. and and i for me it just works as a whole um i haven't been writing any new poems where i think oh that should go in there mm. no it, for me it's very it's complete and i like how mm. the kind of some of the poems echo with each other um and the, you know that they're 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 as i say they're they're separate but they're all part of the whole and it's yeah almost like one big poem or, or one yes big. quite um some of some uh, i mean it, i'd be hard pressed to say what my favorites are because i love all of it uh but i think my out and out what favorite you almost changed on me and i said no it's got to stay as it is okay which one was that which was the unicorn one i'm trying to find it oh um, uh, because of the numbering of course it's yes I mean, I'm pretty good generally at a sort of a spatial thing of or it's on this page, you know, it's, it's three quarters of the way through and it's on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. Not with this book. I've absolutely no. no idea where anything is in this book. Um, oh, it's uh, it, zero, zero, two, zero. Two, zero. In the pyramid of being best for customer care. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What did I want to change it to? <sighs> um, Legend, I think. Yeah. Legendary. Uh, Legendary. Cause you, no, because you already had legendary. Oh, oh yes. Yes. So in the period of being best for customer care, yeah. there are three grades. Not performing, performing, and legendary, or 
unicorn, as we call it. Yes. And I just thought that was just, <laughs> I just love that. Well, and of course, now, now you tell me that you started there at Christmas. Is, is the um, Christmas staff one is somehow related to your initial introduction think, to the Well, play? no, because I was, well, yes. But because I was there for three years, I had, mm. I think I had four Christmases because I just left just before the end of the third year. So, um, right, yeah. and, you know, in retail, Christmas merchandising starts plan you know going Very early. September and stuff like yeah. that. So so there is <laughs> there is a kind of Christmas theme to the book as well. A, yeah. A lot of it is about Christmas. Yes, there's quite a few Christmas orientated yeah. ones. Yeah. Um and uh, that I I quite like that again. It kind of sort of chimes chimes through. Yeah. So. Yes. So we ought to talk about the um metamorphosis of the cover right um because this cover is so right for the book and it's so you <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. i couldn't resist getting getting a couple of t-shirts no um, but i like your long sleeve one though that was purely because they didn't have any my size at the time oh okay and uh, so i went, went for the long sleeve which cost me more oh. um in order to get one at all uh I was very peeved. Um, but anyway, yeah, so um, what were you talking about? The cover. cover. Um, the evolution of the Kevin, cover. Kevin Threlfall, who mm. we use for quite a lot of our co covers. And he has three or four quite distinct styles. I mean, he does these amazing paintings oh, yes, in oils that he then manipulates in the computer so you can have it any colour you like. <laughs> yeah good retail thing that um and we were initially talking about it and i had been thinking barcode but i thought i'm not going to make suggestions because he's good and he'll he might think of something better um and also i hadn't quite envisaged it the way he did it and he didn't actually come up with this initially it was mo it was sort of again very 70s i think we i don't know why we were going 70s with this but there was just that sort of feel to it of these sort of silhouetted bottles yes that's right in various different shapes and sizes yeah. and i was looking at it thinking yeah but it's not quite is it and so i so i emailed him and said you play with a barcode and just see what you can come up with and he came up with five different colorways yeah. and we both went pink and yellow yes, <laughs> yes. um yeah. and we explored whether the actual barcode for in retail worked and it didn't and no. we tried jeremy dixon and it didn't and we tried the barcode real barcode yeah. and that don't, didn't um because we wanted the words to line up and they don't on real barcode no. um sooner or later someone is going to scan this <laughs> it. who knows it's probably gibberish but hope well i hope it's gibberish because i'd be quite worried actually, if it makes sense um and that that was quite a fast decision for the cover In, yeah well i i remember we had a conversation about the cover and um i have to say because i make books and have a mm. background in graphic design yeah. this whole process giving up <laughs> control giving control to someone else oh, i know a, a I huge know, I know. a huge learning journey which is it's been really good so by the time we got to the cover i just trusted you and I, I just thought well i can't yeah. i can't do the cover myself mm. i don't want to do the cover myself i want somebody to interpret it and yeah. i think we just said, we talked about once there's something eye-catching something that wasn't a photograph and something that stood yeah. out on the shelf and something that didn't look like it was a book on how to do retail exactly yeah my biggest concern was it looked like um a textbook for for business students you know? well that would be quite cool <laughs> uh, yeah get but, it on the wrong shelf by accident and just yeah. sort of happens. Yeah. <laughs> so um I have to say that, I, you know, to me, you can't beat that cover. Yeah. You know. uh, the other thing, of course, it doesn't look like a poetry book. No. no. It, at all does it look yeah. like a poetry book. And I just thought, is that a risk? No, I think it's fantastic. It is yeah. going to go wham in your face on yes. the poetry shelves. Yeah. Uh, and it's not this way on, of course, because it's very thin. Yeah. Um, and 
we ha that has proved to be the case. Yeah. Which is well, brilliant. Well, it's, it's, and it kind of goes back to my artist book background as well, where the, the book is an object yeah. in its own right. Yes, and, absolutely. And it's, it's quite rare that in publishing, it, you know, kind of, yeah. the, the, you're allowed to do that. Yes. You know, if, it, you know that my, my little in retail artist books were, they, they had the same kind of, they looked totally different, but mm. they were like a little, an object in themselves. Yeah. And, and I really feel that the, the design of the cover and the back and everything, and the layout and not having page numbers and all that kind of stuff mm. all relates to that. So it becomes something more than just a container for poems. Mm. Um, yes. I mean, actually, I do remember I was, when we were in the process of this before, I think it was even before we'd signed the contract. And I had a conversation with a printer at the London Book Fair. And I was saying, thinking about doing this book, you know, most of the poems are sort of this long. And I want it to be an object rather than a book. And what could you do? And we, and we were getting very carried away about doing it as a concertina book. And so, so you just open yeah. it up and there'll be the whole book. Yes, know, yes. To be read like a till we see. Yeah. Um, and then I found out how much that's going to cost. And that was, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll get as close to that sort of concept as possible. Yeah. Um, and I, I think we achieved that. Um, oh, definitely. With this book. Sorry? I'm very proud of this oh, book. Oh, well, I am too. Um, it's kind of, as I said before, it's everything I would want it to be. Mm. And the fact that I didn't make it all myself and mm. I allowed somebody else to do it <laughs> and it still it, turned out all right. yeah it <laughs> turned out okay <laughs> that's <So> lucky <laughs> but it's not it's just it's really good I don't have to be control freak about it all the time mm. you know? um, yeah and and especially like now I've had a book published and talking to other poets and the process of publishing for them mm. I, I just realised how lucky I am with you, you know. Mm. You know. Uh, well, another cultural freak, you see. So as soon as I, sh I was sure we were on the same wavelength, I thought, okay, we're fine for me to just do this now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's not going to be any repercussions of people weeping. <laughs> no, no. After I got over the idea of, of, of selling it in a giant sock, which was another option. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think... I, even... I thought, don't be silly, Jerry. <laughs> don't be silly. <laughs> But I think even if you don't do that stuff, just the coming up with those ideas frees part of the brain, doesn't it? Yeah. You, you know, you might go, okay, well, we can't do that, but you know. What can we do? What can we do? Yeah. Uh, you know, and for you to allow me not to have any book numbers in at all. Yeah. Is, is really, <laughs> I mean, that's quite amazing as well, you know. But I mean, it makes, per it makes perfect sense to not have page numbers because since every all but one of them is only a page long it'd just be so repetitive saying oh, one, yes. one at the bottom what's the oh, point um, i know but some some people would especially conventional publishers would have say, their, that's their how we do it and yeah. you have to have that, a cover, uh, you have to have a contents and you have to have page numbers yes because um, we didn't even have a contents no no which was again it would be the same thing it would be like zero zero slash zero <laughs> Zero zero five zero two. <laughs> you know. So. I suppose we could have done it like a stock taking sheet or something, and just we could have, but, but I didn't want it to be pastiche. No, and yes, I, I, the, 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 there are limits to it, and I, I, I think we're, we're the right side of pastiche. Yeah, well, I think we're kind of working on the conventions that you'd find, but it's it's not like a, a spoof or anything. It just yeah. works on its on its own terms. Um, yes, and it's it's about the sort of the recognition that you get when you look at the page, and it's in pale grey and back to front. You think, oh yes, this is the back of something. Yeah, you just, you just do. You look and you think this is the back of something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Took me ages to work out how to get it the right way round. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> and then doing the ebook um, and trying to get it so that it was where the because you, know, you haven't yeah. got page ends. No, no. How to, so I had to take it all out of the footers and actually make it part of the poem. Right, yeah. That was complicated. And 
and I gave up at one point that I just won't do this. And then of course COVID came along and we thought, no, we have to have all of our books in eBooks because yeah. you may never sell another physical book physical, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, so I thought, right, got to work out how to do this. Yeah. Dad spent all day playing with it, eventually got it right. Oh, brilliant. Um, so at least I hope so. Cause I just, well, it seems to work on my one. Well, so. there you go. And because the thing is that because people can play in, with it and not have it in the in the font that we set it in and yeah. not have it in the size of font, they'll get what they'll get, but I did yeah. my best. No, that's <laughs> brilliant. So I had to lose some of the footers yeah. because it didn't make sense where they were, where, where they were coming. Yeah. I mean. um, yeah. But mostly I think it's worked. Yeah. Yeah. So having had your debut poetry collection published, what happened next? Oh, uh, well, that was kind of just the start really and so um i did readings done some interviews had um reviews uh it, it's been it's been incredible the stuff that happens that you don't really think about um you know like uh going up to edinburgh and reading at the mm. book fringe at the wonderful lighthouse bookshop that was a complete highlight i mean i met jane Aldous there as well yeah. and, um and uh, like talking to people about books um doing the polari salon um yeah it's, it's just been amazing really and mm. the other thing i've really found it's given me confidence in my writing um to to like carry on and go in slightly different direction but having in retail is like the, it's kind of like a secure it's like the anchor almost it's like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah oh yes well done it once can do it again <laughs> yeah yeah and and um you know just having people's reactions to it. <laughs> i went because so, i work in the local shop and um joe my boss is so great i haven't got the banner here because it's actually on the wall behind the till in the local shop um and so we well she sells oh, and display yeah. <laughs> and we've got copies there and people buy them and excellent one woman came in um uh and she bought a copy and this was just before christmas uh and then after christmas she came and bought two i said oh, oh I bought it too. She goes, Oh, well, I've had the book at Christmas, and my sister came down and she was reading the poems and just performing them around the kitchen table. <laughs> and, and so she said, I just had to get her a copy. So I got one and I got another one for it. You know, it's kind of mm. well, that sort of stuff is really lovely to hear. Oh, I love the know. idea of people performing it around, around the. Yes, and she said she's doing the voices. So over the sprouts. <laughs> yeah, over the Christmas dinner and yeah. she's doing the voices and oh, all brilliant. that kind of stuff. I can so, get you cut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buying really like turkey. <laughs> well, and also um, when people have reviewed it and, and how how what people see in the the book uh that's been quite interesting as well mm. um and uh hasn't usually been stuff that wasn't there but haven't seen it kind of amplified to such mm. an extent and that you know that's quite interesting um and also just letting go out in the world mm. that's that's been quite a a big thing as well really you know um the once it's done you don't have any control over it really and no you know it's no. gone over to america and spain and places like this and it's yeah it's, it's been really really good really good yeah great so you're working on something new yes uh well again and this kind of goes back to in retail well it doesn't kind of it does go back to retail it does so uh one of the poems um is about how listening to um you make me feel mighty real by sylvester on the zero zero thirteen zero zero thirteen um i might read that one then might i um, yes i think that might be a good one yeah so um and, and that reminds me of uh when I was 15 and basically beaten up at youth club 
and um, it was kind. Of, it's, it was kind of like a safe way of writing about it because it was part of the in retail series, and it wasn't mm. specifically um, like. A, a, it was about that event, but it, it was kind of well, not hidden, but it it, it was a, a memory it triggered a memory kind of thing, um, and uh, so that the other thing about what I've realised about having um, in retail published is that poetry is magic, it is a spell, it <laughs> is really powerful, really powerful. So I had. Um, the local launch of the book um, held in the village hall just down the road and so I read that poem in the actual room where it happened and it was it, it was a spine very spooky very, <laughs> when I mean when I was reading it I didn't become over, I didn't become overcome by emotion but I could just feel this power it was like something left it's yes, like, laying a ghost yeah it was um, and my sister was there and she felt it as well mm. and um so from that um and it was really interesting we <laughs> we've been doing all the work haven't we getting the the book to print and then we went to print i was thinking oh well you know i'll just wait till it's back from the printers and you know it's coming up to christmas and chickly -chick -chick. And then boom, 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 all these ideas for poems came. So I had to like start writing them down. So it's going to be called, um, well, at the moment it's called A Voice Coming From Him. And the poems deal with uh, my childhood bullying, um, homophobia, and a teenage suicide attempt when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And kind of looking at how that's affected my life on an ongoing basis. So it sounds a lot kind of heavier than in retail. Yeah, uh, I was concerned about that, but when you sent me the, 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 where you've got to so far, apart from weeping copiously by about the fifth poem, and, and having, so I can't read anymore, I'm going to put it away. Uh, and then immediately picking it up and going, yes, I am going to, and reading to the end, going, yeah, we're having that. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Let me know when you're finished. <laughs> Honestly, I was sobbing into the computer. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, then, but it's not heavy. No. So, so, how you do that? Uh, so, so say all these devastating things, but still manage to keep it not light but level. Well, well I'm glad you say that because I I want to do that. I don't want to be like traumatic. I want to be to cast no. cathartic, cathartic, oh. um, cathartic, cathartic. Uh, but also I want able other people to be able to to recognize themselves in it yes or parts of themselves or parts of friends or things that might have happened and just say oh yeah you know perhaps that's why I'm a bit like this because something happened like that or yeah or or that you can get through it you know and you you can or is actually also I did that to someone Yes. Because yeah. we can't assume that it'll only be no. the people on the receiving end. No, no. Well, it's, you know, and it's the same with me. I re some of the poems I haven't written yet are going to be about, you know, how bitchy I was to people. Mm. Um, I, I don't think I was ever physically horrible to people, but I was really bitchy. And I'm sure that go that's uh, as a result of that bullying, because it mm. was a, is an attack and it's a way of not letting people get to you and blah 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 um and uh as i say i haven't written those ones yet because uh, they haven't percolated up so that it's kind of it's not like oh, poor little me that's something to me it's, it's trying yeah to... i mean i have absolutely no interest in publishing misery memoirs no, it's no. absolutely not a no. misery memoir no. um and in the same way as um, Kate Foley's Don't Touch Garden, which is about being brought up adopted during the Second World War. And if you say to people, brought up adopted in the Second World War, you think, oh, mm. but it is the funniest book. Yeah. yeah. And it's delightful and witty and shocking and all sorts of things. And so is a voice coming from him going yeah. to be. Well, that, 
I mean, and that's what you want. And, yeah. And, but also I want it to end on positive yeah. feeling. And it's kind of, kind of looking at how you change your behaviours. And, and just for example, people that have been bullied find it very hard to stand up for other people because they don't want to be picked on again. Mm. So it's trying to, it's like how you, how you try and change that behaviours to, to be able to, to support other people really and not, mm. to, not to be a bystander, to be, to be, I think, upstander, I think is the word now. Yeah, um, yeah that's good. And uh, so there, there's going to be a lot of it in there and, and a kind of sort of uh, mosaic -y images and, um, or collage type images. And I'd quite like um, facts and uh, help lines and all those, all those kind of things. So it becomes just a little bit more, again, like in retail, it's, it's not going to be just your normal run of the mill mm. um, poetry book, um, w w which would be fine if it was, but um, for this, it just, it just feels it's got to be something a bit different mm. um and um it's been uh quite emotional reading my my sister just before lockdown she was in spain for a month so i went over in january and on oh no, a two months she was there so i went over in january and i took her the very first draft and she was the first first person that read it and um so that was quite powerful as well because she could remember stuff that I couldn't mm. or the fact that like she's younger than me so she didn't know what had happened but she knew something had happened um, and, and so that talking to her about it was very emotional but also gave me um, ideas for going slightly different directions as well mm. yeah to take to take other people's points of view into hand so the, mm. there's, there's going to be poems which are just other people's voices really uh, so they're either verbatim or fan poetry from the web or articles or stuff like that so it's 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 a it's another voice that's not my own but it relates yeah. either to me or to the circumstances so um yeah that's been it's been quite interesting how in the same way as in retail, I, you know, I wrote all the poems from retail. It's like, oh, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. It wasn't, oh, here's a new retail poem, or and here's one about the countryside, or here's one about, no, it, it was like retail poem, and that's a voice coming from, a voice coming from. And it, until, until you've got it out. Until, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very interesting, very mm. interesting. And a couple of them are, they go back to my, earliest sort of starts in poetry and it might be it might be just one line or two lines from a poem um but i can see that's what they go in there now mm. and that's the other thing about kind of coming to this all later in life is you've got that kind of store of stuff you can look back to yes and and you've got the distance from it to recognize it for what it is mm. rather than than Potentially just to be going, yeah, I don't want to think about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, I do want to think about it mm. and I want to... Um, do something with it. Do something with it and help other people with it. Mm. That's what I would like, you know. Mm. Uh, in retail, works for a lot of people because it's funny, mm. but it also recognises like all the power plays that go on when you work yeah. in retail. So uh, that's been some of the feedback I've got, which has been really nice. Yeah. Because people said, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can, yeah, I can understand all the funny bits, but then, yeah, all that, all that very manipulative yeah. managerial hierarchy and conformity is another aspect. Of it. So, yeah. And not necessarily just in retail, pretty much uh, any business that yeah. is, public facing in some way all that things about not yeah. being allowed to wear a certain watch and things yes totally <laughs> so um yeah well that's that's the next project so i'm kind of i'm working mm. away on that really right um, so we'll have to see 
what happens, aren't we? We will. I have a fairly good idea. But <laughs> 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 okay. Um, is there anything you you would like me to ask you that I haven't thought of? Uh, don't think so. I think we've covered most stuff, haven't we? Mm. Um, it's. Uh, I mean, what I really like about it, just looking at myself in that picture, it is, it's a shop display, isn't it? It is a shop display. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like War, Warhol's cans of beans kind of thing. Yes, um, yes. And, uh, yeah. You so could have any model in retail as long as it's pink. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't it interesting when they had all the colourways? Yes. Because uh, they, they were green. all great. There was, there was a turquoise one, wasn't there? Yeah, and a blue and an orange, wasn't there? Yes, yeah, there's a blue green. and orange and a turquoise and yellow and a green and pink and yeah and some of them really made your eyes hurt <laughs> um whereas uh, to the extent you couldn't quite see the lines it was a bit bridget yes. right yeah, yeah 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 um and i was just thinking yeah you don't want people to be wincing from the book <laughs> no no that's not not a good look um, no and well, also i mean you know why not pink <laughs> well also you know i really like pink for the queerness of it as well yeah it's sort yeah. of subliminal message going it's really <laughs> well, well, subliminal not, i wouldn't say subliminal no but it's not at all <laughs> but but it's not like nina nina <laughs> no so you know all that that kind of stuff um yeah so i think a lot like looking back at in retail i can see a lot of themes that actually would go into a voice coming from him yeah but uh, you know, in a in a different way. So this is yeah, be, it's a different focus. Different focus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's lovely to talk to you, Jeremy. Oh, brilliant to talk to you. What, and what actually, fun. one one of the things I sort of flashed into my mind when you were talking about going to Edinburgh, um, that one of the reasons that that I set Arachne up was because I wanted people to talk to um about all of this stuff and what i really really wanted was for you all to be able to talk to each other and so it's yeah. great the yeah. way that you and jane have oh. bonded um oh, brilliant well it's interesting i feel like i know ness though i've never met yeah. her yeah uh, jane and i just got on like that we spent a whole lot she took you shopping <laughs> charity shopping she charity knew the right shopping. places to go yeah um and it was really nice because i didn't know anybody in edinburgh yeah um and i there was somebody in the audience that you knew was cheering on for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then um, I met other people from the audience as well that we went out for a meal yeah. a, a couple of days after that. So mm -hmm. I just, that, yeah, it was just brilliant. And I think that's, that's the other aspect of it. When you have a poetry book, it seems it's a bit harsh, but it's kind of that's, that's what helps you go into all these other places isn't it and until you have the book you can't do that and it's the calling card yeah it's a calling card um and uh it's uh yeah part of the whole yeah process. and all the lovely bookshops as well i mean because lighthouse was was so oh. brilliant oh i love that i I, I, just, I just emailed them and oh. said hi yeah be an own small press here got a couple of books coming out soon that we think would be up your street yeah. how about it and they took forever to answer and then they came back and said oh lovely lovely yes yes can we do this can we do that and what about so and so yeah, okay <laughs> no they were look i mean well that's the other thing isn't it you know um the arnofini bookshop were great yeah. in bristol uh, yeah. they actually allowed me to do reading in the bookshop uh which was fantastic and they, griffin books in panath they're, they've uh, let me stock it in there mm. um, so that's the other lovely thing just getting to know different yeah. bookshops and booksellers and that kind of stuff zero zero slash one three the in-store radio is on a major 70s kick after an advert for Snocks in anti wrinkle serum, you make me feel open brackets, mighty real close brackets starts. Replaying a dark corner of the youth club, 
where I dance by myself to Sylvester, unable to resist that immaculate beat, compelled to leave the false safety of a line of canvas chairs, failing to see what is apparent to everyone else watching me, punched the length of the pool table. Zero, zero, slash, two, zero. In the pyramid of being best for customer care, there are three grades, not performing, performing, and legendary, or unicorn, we call it. There are rumours that quotas are fixed in advance, so anyone could be told you're as bad as the boy never here, or she who walks away from cues. So we worry what level each other has met, and do they deserve extra, and should their pay remain the same, frozen for another year? <laughs> 